Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus, San Clemente. We come out here to lift up the name of Jesus, proclaiming the power of Jesus. Jesus came to set the captives free. Yes, he came to set the captives free. We praise you, Lord. Jesus came and died on a cross and resurrected on the third day to fulfill all scripture. Praise the Lord, the Son of God. It says the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus came to set us free from the bondage of sin and death. Jesus came to set us free from being slaves of sin. Praise the Lord. In John 8, 31, Jesus said, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and the slave will not abide in the house of the Lord forever, but whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Praise the Lord. 1 John 1 says, God is light, and in him is no darkness. If we say we know him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us of all sins. Praise the Lord. First John 2 says, if we say we know him and we do not keep his commandments, we are a liar and the truth is not in us. And then it goes on to say, Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world, neither the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are not of the Father, but are of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust thereof, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Praise the Lord. Jesus sends us out to preach. That is a command of the Lord Jesus to his believers. It is not just given to have one pastor and sit in church once a week. The, the commands of Jesus is to go out and preach to every creature in Mark 16, 15, to preach repentance for the remission of sins to those who will be sanctified unto an inheritance with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, the Bible declares in Acts chapter 17 that God commands all men everywhere to repent because he is appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained and he has given assurance by raising him from the dead. That is the name of Jesus Christ that at every, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of the Father who is in heaven. Yes, there is only one name given under heaven which men can be saved. It is the name of Jesus Christ. Every other way is a false way. Buddha did not rise from the grave. Hare Krishna did not. Muhammad did not. And all of these other ways are false. Jesus said, whoever comes after me must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Jesus said that whoever hears my words and does them, I will liken him unto a man who is wise, who built his house upon the rock. And when the storm came, and the winds blew, and the waves crashed, it stayed because it was founded upon the rock. And I will tell you about a foolish man. He is the one who hears these words of the Lord Jesus and does not do them. He is likened unto a man who built his house upon the sand. And when the storm came, and the wind blew, and the waves crashed, great was its fall great was its fall. You've got to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving your own selves. The Bible says, even the demons believe there is one God. You do well, but even the demons believe, and they tremble. James says, you show me faith, and I will show you works. In these last days, we see the church falling away as it's prophesied in the Bible in 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 4, and these are words of life that are going to pull you out of the fire, that are going to pull you out of the wide path. Jesus said that it's a narrow path in Matthew 7. 
Jesus said, beware of false prophets. You will know them by their fruits. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good tree brings forth good fruit. So out of your mouth is going to come things that are true and righteous and holy, pointing to the Lord Jesus. Or, or out of your mouth is going to come filled and uh, fornication and uncleanliness and all of these things and idolatries. For wherever your heart is, there your treasure is. So you are you storing up treasure in heaven? Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Are you brought up as a believer? Well, I got to tell you something. In John 3, Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he can't even see the kingdom of God. You've got to be born of the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God that comes in a man when he's born again, and he is no longer his own. He is bought with the blood of Jesus. He is resurrected in the power of Jesus. It be no longer him that lives, but Christ that lives in him. And if this isn't you, you need to fall on your face and cry out to the Lord that I need your spirit to show me that I'm bought with the blood of Jesus, that I am not my own. And in Romans 8, it says that God's spirit will bear witness with your spirit, that something has changed in your life, that you are born again of the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Yes, and then when you're born again, you can see the kingdom of God. When you're not born again, you're still blind. And he says, let the blind lead the blind. They're both going to fall into a ditch. And you see many false Christians in these last days going to evil concerts, going to wicked concerts that glorifies demons. And you see a lot of the kids' shirts and, and even adult shirts, and they're wicked. And they glorify Satan and his kingdom. Second... Corinthians chapter 4 says the God of this age has blinded the eyes of unbelievers. So they're blind. You've got to be born again to have light. And when you have light, you're going to understand these words. It's not going to be foreign language to you. You're going to know that it is the Spirit of God that is coming off the pages of the Bible. And Jesus said in John 6, 6, 3, that his words are spirit and everlasting life. Jesus said in John 12, 48, the same words that are rejected by people will be the same words that judge them on judgment day. So out of the mouth uh, comes forth evil things, blasphemies, and all of that. So when you're listening to wicked music, when you're talking about things like that, that's showing you that your heart is still not right with God. When your heart is right with God, you're going to be preaching His words. You're going to love the true brethren. You're going to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And you're going to love your neighbor as yourself. Believe on Jesus, my friend. He died for you. That you would no longer live for yourself, but for Him who died for you. We love you kids. We love the kids. And we, we, we are, Amen, we're mourning for the kids. Praise God for you, little one. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, praise God, little one. Thank you. So we love you kids, and we very, we're very mourning for the age we're in. The age we're in is where kids are being taught they might not be male and female in these schools. They're being taught to kill babies. They're being taught that love is love, and that the Bible is hate speech. And let me tell you something. Jesus dying on that cross is the greatest act of love that we've ever seen. And it's 2023 after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We better heed his words. Jesus said in John 10, my sheep know my voice and they follow me and they will not go with another. So if you're born again of the spirit of God, you're going to understand his words. You're not going to reject them. You're going to, you're going to die with Christ and be resurrected in newness of life. And that's what it says in Romans 6. This is what the church needs to be preached to that says we're all still sinning every day. The Bible says, shall we go on in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How can we who have died to sin live any longer therein? Praise the Lord. And he goes on to say, don't you know that whoever you submit yourselves to, that is who you're a slave of? So if you're still smoking, drinking, listening to wicked music, you have no control over your vessel, you're still a slave of sin. The Lord hasn't delivered you. And the Lord can deliver you. The Lord wants to deliver you. It's just the sin that separates us from the Holy God. And we've got to grow up in knowledge of God. We've got to mature in the Lord Jesus. Because Jesus said many, praise God. Many are going to say in that day, Lord, Lord, 
So we have the warning from Jesus in Matthew 7. Yes, God is real. We have the warning in Matthew 7 where Jesus said, many are going to say in that day, Lord, Lord. And the thing that Jesus said is they weren't doing the will of the Father. But wait a second, we see miracles. We see them arguing with the Lord Jesus, but we, keep, we prophesied, we cast out devils, we did many wonderful works. And Jesus says to this group, depart from me, ye that work sin. So we're supposed to be slaves of righteousness unto holiness. That is what you're created for, to worship God. The Bible says the mind that stays attuned to God stays in perfect peace. So in these last days, there's so much suicide. There's so much uh, a drug overdose. And it's because we're in the last days where kids are being indoctrinated by demonic spirits in the music, in, in Hollywood, promoting what is evil. It says in Isaiah 5:20, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put light for dark and dark for light, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So what it's saying right there is woe to you when you call something that God says evil good. And the Bible talks about woes that are going to come upon these people. And those every time woes are pronounced, it's judgments. And then this is why we're called to preach. Jesus preached and he warned about hell 42 times that we won't go there. And Jesus warned many in the church are heading there. And why? Because they're still practicing sin. They're lawless. They're not born again. They're not living for God. They, they have a demon level belief where they believe and they go to church and they're happy about this, but they still live for themselves. Jesus sent us out to preach to the highways and byways in Luke 14, compelling people to come into the kingdom of God. Yes, the Lord Jesus sends us out to preach his words. He says, know ye not in Romans 6 that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. That's being born again. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, meaning going forward, we should no longer serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if, if Christ, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon yourself dead to sin indeed but alive in God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in its lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And here we go in verse 14. For sin shall have no more dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom you present yourself servants to obey? That's who servants you are? Whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free of sin, you became servants of righteousness. Praise the Lord. And he goes on to say that as, as we used to live, we used to live in sin. We used to yield our members servants of unrighteousness to iniquity unto iniquity, meaning sin upon sin. And even now you yield yourself servants to righteousness unto holiness. Praise the Lord. So obedience is faith, my friends. Matthew 13, 21 says that you can hear the word of God in the kingdom preached and receive it with joy. And still, you do not endure. What, why, why? It's because you're not fully submitted to God. It's because you're a hearer of the word. You like the sound of it, but you like your music. 
you like your football, you like your other things, your maybe even porn. Probably not for you kids, you're probably too innocent for that. But eventually it gets there. Maybe it's just a little marijuana. Maybe it's drugs, pills. You know, all of these things makes you a slave. And that's why there's so much suicide. There's slavery to pills. There's slavery to Instagram. Slavery to, to likes and, and instant gratification. But we are slaves of God because Jesus died for us. We are no longer of this world. We are bought with the blood of Jesus and we walk out our salvation with fear and trembling. We come to you trembling with this message that there are people going to hell. This is a fearful message, my friends, that if you don't heed the words of Jesus, if you go on in sin and you, and you have a false assurance that you're okay, that you could be one of those who hear the words, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice sin. In Matthew 13, there are four different ways you can hear the Word of God. And this verse used to convict me when I was a believer who did what I wanted. I listened to wicked music, I sold drugs, and, and I was a, a fake believer. But I told people, yeah, I'm not following Jesus right now. This is as a kid, your age, even younger than some of you, a runaway kid. And I, and I went into rebellion. And the Son had to set me free of my sins. He had to pour out His Spirit on me. And he made me a new man. And I had right standing with God. I'd hear his voice. And so uh, these words made more sense to me. In 1 Corinthians, I would read the, word, the verse that says, God has made a way of escape from every temptation known to man. And I, would, and I would read that. And I would say, Lord, I don't see the escape. I'm still stuck in sin. It's because I wasn't born again in the Spirit of God. When you're born again in the Spirit of God, you are a new creation in Christ. The Bible says all who are in Christ are new creations. The old is gone, the new is here. You hear his voice, and in times of refreshing come upon those who have repented in Acts 3. And I can tell you that's what it was like for me. Times of refreshing, the Lord fills you up with his joy, and he, and he makes you a new person, and you don't like the things you used to like, and you can't really listen to the wicked music anymore, and the pills and all of that, they're, they're gone. They're gone, you're, you're set free. And now you've got to be about a slave of righteousness. You've got to put your hand to the plow, preach the words of Jesus. And he teaches you what the words actually mean. And you see that, whoa, this is a fearful thing that Jesus said, fear not man who could kill body. And that is it. I tell you who to fear. Fear God who could kill body and then throw soul into hell. That is who you should fear. And you read these parables about the kingdom of God now that you're born again. And you see that not all who say, Lord, are going to be in the kingdom of God. They might start off well. They might start off. But as soon as tribulation and persecution comes for the Lord Jesus Christ, who's known as the Word of God made flesh, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us in John 1. And so in Matthew 13, 21, we see that some hear and have joy, but they receive the kingdom, they have joy, they like this message, but as soon as tribulation and persecution come for Jesus, they become offended and fall away. The next here makes it further, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke it out, no fruit. Only one here hears and understands and has fruit 160 and 30 fold. And this is the one who hears and understands and obeys that doctrine from the heart. And he follows the Lord and he preaches the Lord's words. In John 3, 34, it says, the Lord, who the Lord sends, speaks the words of God. If your pastor isn't preaching the very words of God and giving you the full counsel of God's word, the Bible calls him a hireling. He, and he will flee when, 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 the, when, the, when the time comes. And, and the time has come, my friends. The time has come. I can't even speak to you about certain things or we get censored on the internet. And you probably can figure out what that is. They're trying to control this world through pharmacia. Revelation 18.23, the merchants were the great men of the earth, and by thy pharmacia their sorceries, all nations were deceived. We see that age right now, my friends. We see it. We can see that day is quickly approaching. Are you right with God? Are you one of the wise ones who's obeying the Lord Jesus, who's understanding his words? Because in Matthew 13, that parable, that ought to show you that some are not following Jesus. When they have to follow him and stand for truth against uh, all these ungodly things being taught in some of these schools, uh, uh, even against uh, the church that's falling away, partnering with rock stars, partnering with the Pope, 
partnering with the great one world religion, partnering with Bill Gates and, and this world just so they can keep their church and their money coming in. They're falling away, my friends. They're not standing for the word of Jesus who said he is the only way, he is the truth, and he is the life, and no one comes to the Father except through the Son. That makes every other way a false way. And if you're born again of the Spirit of God, you're, you're knowing the age we're in. You're not just sitting in the pew anymore. You're coming out to the streets. You're saying, what is my calling and election? I'm called and I'm supposed to be doing something for the Lord. It says the Holy Spirit's given to those who obey in Acts 5.32. And in Hebrews 5.9, it says Jesus became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. How did, how did he become that? Because he was obedient unto the cross. He, he despised. He didn't look at the shame that was set before him. He knew about the joy that he was going to be at the right hand of the Father, making all his enemies his footstool, and that he was going to call us brethren. The Lord Jesus calls his, his kids brethren. And we love the brethren, and we're calling you to come to the Lord Jesus in spirit and truth. The Bible says God does not hear the prayers of sinners, but he hears the prayers of those who worship in spirit and truth and does the will of God. Jesus said, who is my family? These who do the will of the Father. These who follow me and love my words. He says, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, he will be ashamed of them when he returns in the glory of the holy angels. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, we see that Jesus is coming back in flaming fire with the holy angels to judge those who know not God nor obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is fearful. If you're not obeying Jesus, you're on the wrong side of this. The Bible talks about being an enemy of the cross, even in churches. Most of the Bible, when we're reading these Bibles to you, these scriptures to you, it's Jesus preaching to the church. It's Paul preaching to the church saying, be not deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, neither fornicator, idolater or covetous, neither drunkard, neither reviler, neither drug user, neither sodomite, neither homosexual. And he says, but such were some of you, but you were washed and you were justified in the spirit of God. You're no longer walking like that. Now you're bought with the blood of Jesus. You're a new creation in Christ. Now you have a fear of God. It says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Live out the rest of your time here sojourning, passing by. We're passerbyers. This world is not our home. Our home is built with God, uh, God whose, whose maker is God, and he built, he's building something else for us. It's the new heaven and new earth where righteousness dwells. The only thing coming into that kingdom is those who are bought with the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And we don't want the books to be opened and you not be found written in the Lamb's book of life. If your name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life, that you are not God's, and you will go into the lake of fire, the Bible says in Revelation. In Revelation 21, it says to him who overcomes, I will be a father to him, and he will be my son or daughter. And you will have all things, but to the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the sorcerers, the whoremongers, the murderers, and all liars will have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the living water that comes out of our belly. It's the word of God that never returneth void. It is powerful. It is able to change your life. It says, receive with meekness the implanted word of God into your heart that is able to save your soul. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So that word, it's got to be in your heart. In Psalm 119, he said, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In 2 Peter chapter 2, talks about the false teachers. They promise you liberty, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. Their eyes are full of adultery. They can't cease from sin. This is a false teacher that can't cease from sin. Not a born-again believer. A born-again believer is walking in newness of life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And in the last days, it says, they, many will forsake the right way, and they will go the way of Balaam, the madness of the prophet. They forsook the right way. They started off in ministry okay, and they forsook it. Why? Because they loved the praise of men. They loved money. They loved their, co uh, their, their concert-type conferences where they're so esteemed, where, where, they, where they get the praise, and they never tell you, you got to do the will of God. Makes full proof of thy ministry, like Paul said to Timothy. He says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. The word is good for reproof, for rebuke for exhorting, for convincing. In 2 Timothy 3, with all long suffering and patience, you know, all scripture is God breathed and it's good for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished and perfect for every good work. 
but the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap up for themselves teachers who will preach to their itching ears, turning away from the truth and turning aside to myths. Praise the Lord, it's not going to be the born-again believers. The church of Jesus is holy, living for Him, warning all men everywhere to repent, for the day is coming, hot like an oven, burning like an oven, it says in Malachi. Be found in Christ, be found doing the will of the Father, and you will have eternal life. You will have eternal life. And in this life, you will have the joy, unspeakable joy. You won't want the drugs. You won't get filled up by this world. This world is, is killing you. This world, all the lust thereof, they never fill you up. No matter how well you do in life, eventually you're drained. You're drained because there's, it's everything that glitters is not gold. Only that's tried through the fire it can be refined like gold. The refining fire is the word of God. It's been tried through the fire seven times. Jesus said, buy from me, Jesus Christ, gold tried in the fire, that you may be clothed in white, that the shame of your nakedness be not exposed, that you may have eyes to have deceit. Jesus said, Behold, I chasten those I love. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody will open, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Him who overcomes will get to sit on my throne, even as I overcame and sat on my Father's throne. How did the Lord Jesus overcome? By going to that cross. And that is what a born-again believer does. He denies himself. He lives in the spirit that he will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Be not deceived. These who sow to the flesh will reap corruption, but he who sows the Spirit will reap everlasting life. Praise the Lord. First John for you. Praise God. Good JGB for you. I don't have any more. Praise the Lord, San Clemente. Praise the Lord, San Clemente. First John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard declare we have unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And the truth and we and do not do the truth. Hold on, I lost my eyesight there. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Hold on, the pages keep blowing. Hold on. Let me move it over here. With fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus Christ and His Son, brother. Sorry, <laughs> these pages keep okay. Say, but we that walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and the Word is not in us. My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And, and He is the propitiation for our sins and not for our, ours only but also for the sins of the whole world and hereby we we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments he that saith i know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of god perfected 
Hereby know we know that we are in him. He that saved, he abideth in him, ought to also walk as he walked. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Sounds so good. The pages keep Sorry. going around. Sounds so good. Praise the Lord. All right, praise, praise God, you guys. God bless in Jesus' mighty name. Yes.